Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and today is the 1st of November. That's right, we've got two months left of the rest of this year, and when we think about it as well, the rest of this decade. This time of year is always bizarre for me because the, the weather gets so horrible. What well, especially horrible. I mean, the weather's pretty, pretty horrible most of the time in the UK. You've got to make the most of it when it's actually good during the summer. But around this time of year, especially horrible. The rain becomes going from about six days a week rainy to now kind of like seven days a week rainy. It's just the days are shorter. It's such a miserable time of year. And so it's always a time of year where there's less reason to get outside or, or practically no reason to get outside. And I always try and focus on something that's dear to me. And that is my content, my content on YouTube, my content on Twitch as well. I always try to improve it uh, around this time of year, try and give more thought to my videos, try and also ramp up production of the videos as well. And so I am pleased to announce that I want to redouble my focus on my YouTube channel for the rest of this decade as Quacky Baby TV, as we like to call it around. What? Well, that's that's actually what it is when I think about it. As we like to call it around here, I'm sure that a lot of you have got very many names for me and for reasons why you would want to watch my content. But it'll be entering its second decade. I made this channel in 2012 or very early in 2012. Um, and we're going to be going into 2020. And I want to finish this decade in style. I'm going to try and release videos daily for the rest of the year. Whether I'm going to be able to manage it or not, I, I will try. And if for some reason I don't manage to get out a daily video on YouTube, I'll try and make it up to you with um, some kind of extra content on Twitter or, or Facebook or, or something like that. But yeah, maybe, just maybe, I will get out 60 videos before 2020 hits. And accordingly, I've never actually done this on this channel. I don't think I've ever told people to subscribe on my channel. Now, what is subscribing on YouTube? Subscribing on YouTube is where, you know, you go and you hit that, that, that notification for the subscribe button. What does it actually mean? Well, when you subscribe to somebody on YouTube by hitting the icon there, that means that their videos are going to show up in your subscriptions tab. And this is an account that I just made called Artyparty. Yeah, Artyparty9000 at gmail.com. Sorry if any of you wanted to get that email address, but I just absolutely claimed it myself. But once you subscribe to a channel, their videos show up in the notification. And it's something that I don't really b b bother telling people because I, I hope that people would be wanting to come back to the channel anyway. But if I'm going to be releasing videos, hopefully every single day for the rest of the year, then I think there's more reason than ever to subscribe to the terrible Quacky Baby. And also, if for some reason you want to get further notifications to be able to really get all of my videos as soon as they come out, then there's even a bell a bell next to it, which you can click, and then you can decide about what kind of notifications you want to get. Do you want to get all notifications, or do you want to have personalized notifications? One of the two is completely up to you. And I guess if you find them annoying, then just make sure you come back here, and then click that bell again, and then change whatever notification settings that you want to have. But if you see that gray bell, that means you're getting all of that sweet, quacky baby content delivered to you instantly, right? Oh dear, how can I keep a straight face when I say that? Hmm, anyway. So, so five 196,000 subscribers. We're so close to 600. But maybe, just maybe, this video might start to, to bump it up a little bit towards there. Or maybe we could even reach it before the end of the year. That'd be something special. So one thing that I also want to do is get back to watching all of your awesome games. It's something that I've really stopped doing over the on the channel over the last few months. And that's because I've been having quite a few good games myself. But also because Wargaming has been releasing a lot of different games game modes, although they kind of skipped out on Halloween this year, as well as novel ideas to focus the channel on. But if I'm going to be releasing 60 videos in the rest of the year, I think there's going to be more reason than ever to get watching your awesome games again. And that's where I get most excited on my YouTube channel when I'm commentating on awesome replays. And so if you've had any epic games this year that you want to have featured on my channel, then go on to the whatreplays.eu website upload your replay and write an exciting title like I had a five versus one where I got an epic ram kill and then make sure you please put quickie baby in the title and that is so that I can see that you're one of my community and that you actually want to be featured on this channel because I would far rather feature you guys, my community, than some random person on the What Replays website. So I hope all of this is really great news for all of you, my YouTube community. You're going to have videos every single day for the rest of the year, so more videos. You're hopefully going to have 
better replays because you guys, this community, are going to upload your best throughout the year. And I'm going to try and find some of them and commentate on them. And also, hopefully, I've showed more of you as to how you can get notifications so you don't miss any of that great content coming up in 2019. But anyway, actually, this isn't going to be just a, a service announcement video. Let's get stuck into some gameplay today. So today we're rolling out in an infamous vehicle in World of Tanks. This is the Ban Chantillon 12T. And why is it infamous inside World of Tanks? Because this is the vehicle that you have to play more than any other tank in the game if you want to unlock all of the vehicles. That's because this tier 8 auto-loading light tank leads on to three tier 9 tanks. You've got the AMX-30 prototype. You've got the... Um, the tier 9 French autoloading medium tank, the Bat Chantillon 25T AP, not to be confused with the tier 10, which is just the Bat Chantillon 25T. And then finally, what's the other thing that you've got that this thing leads on to? Oh yeah, the autoloading light tanks as well, the AMX 1390. And so you have to grind something silly like 600,000 experience in this vehicle once you've got it fully elite, just to be able to have everything the tank can unlock. And I can see why some people actually don't really mind that too much. As long as you're not trying to rush through it and get every French tank ASAP, it's actually not too bad of a tank to play. Uh, it's got a four-round autoloader with 170 alpha damage. And this is the first in the tech tree where the, the alpha damage has gone up since tier 6. Your tier 6 and your tier 7 are all packing that that kind of mid-range 75 millimeter alpha damage. And once you get into the Bat Chantillon 12T, you've still got a 75 millimeter, but it's a 75 millimeter that deals 170. And so that means you've got significantly more magazine bursty damage that you can deal to your opponents. And so that means you can actually sting pretty quick. That was 545 damage there in quick succession to the side of the tier seven Polish heavy tank. And that, that's not chumps change for a tier eight light tank. If we're in something like a T92, the premium, the American premium, we could have put three shots in there. It would have probably taken us at least well, way longer than this autoloader did. But the, the problem is, is that you're only hitting for 150. So this thing, if you can manage to use it in bursty combat, is actually tremendous. The other thing as well that's fairly nice about the tank is that your view range is finally starting to get up to a decent mark. And so with coated optics, if you have a reasonably skilled crew, but it doesn't have to be an incredibly skilled crew, you're going to start to get up towards that spotting distance cap of 445. And so God forbid you can actually be an active scout. For me on my AMX 12T, I would probably take binoculars every single time unless I have an incredibly skilled crew. Probably on my 1375 as well, I'm going to be taking binoculars as well. But as soon as you get up to the tier 8 Bat Chatillon 12T, you're really starting to get to the stage where you can be that active scout with coated optics and it just feels so good. Oh wow, talk about feeling good. There's an AMX 1375 on my team who just Amaracked a tiger. But luckily, I tracked him, so I got 938 assistance as well. Good stuff indeed. There's only one thing that I really hate about this tank, and that probably is the penetration on its standard rounds. At 170, that's really not great, and so I do take a lot of premium rounds on this tank, because it's a tier 8, and how often do your tier 8s get into matchups like this where against tier 7 and tier 8 tanks only? Not all that much, right? Mostly you're dealing with tier 9s and you're dealing with tier 10s, and good luck trying to penetrate most tier 9s, tier 10s, or even, let alone a lot of tier 8s, frontally, with 170 standard penetration. So all in all, an absolute dominating game here for the Bat Chatillon 12T. We went, uh, we made our way towards the center of the map, then when we dominated the view range and we also started to shut down some of the aggressive play of the heavy tanks, then we went up to another high ground point we're using bushes, and now this is really where this tank is just extra special, just being the harassment role. You can reload your damage in between your, man your maneuvers, and that's really where the advantage of an autoloader comes into play. And the damage per minute of this vehicle, while it's definitely not incredible, is, is by no means terrible. It's, it's an alright manage, uh, it's an alright damage per minute that you can have on this tank. And so by storing up that damage between your fights, you can start to actually rack up a significant amount of damage that you couldn't in your non-autoloading tanks. And so the Bat Chatillon 12T, it's kind of this all-rounder tier 8 light tank that is also not exceptional at anything. Definitely doesn't have the biggest magazine of a tier 8 light tank, considering that there are tier 7 American light tanks that deal 900 damage with the, the six round autoloader on the T-71, for example. If you're looking for camera rate or you're looking for raw speed, then you're, you're better to go for the Lynx. And if you're looking for higher penetration, 
Then you could even go for the, the tier 8 uh, British uh, light tank, which is going to be the LHMTV, I think. I'm pretty sure. Is it the G-Saw that's at tier 8 or is it the LHMTV that's tier 8? I don't even know. That's how much attention I really paid to those tanks after I managed to grind through them. They're fairly forgettable, those, those tier 8 British lights. And of course, if you want just that, that speed and that alpha, then the Lynx is a great option as well. But the Bat Chatillon 12T, you're going to have to play it a lot if you want to unlock all of the vehicles inside the game. And with some conscious play, like using these bushes, where you go into them, and just for everyone who hasn't heard me say this before, if you drive into the bush, you can see through the bush. If you pull back behind the bush until it's now opaque, or it's, it's not transparent on your screen as you saw, then you can shoot through the bush and still get a large amount of the camo bonus. Because of course, every single tank, apart from your old school overpowered premiums like the E25, are pretty much losing about 80 or 90 percent of their camera rating when they're firing and when your base camera rating is 35 percent uh, when you're moving and when you're stationary in a vehicle like the Bat Chatillon 12T you're only going to have maybe about uh, five percent when you're firing or maybe even eight percent and that's not going to be enough to stay hidden at long range even against vehicles like the IS-3 that don't have the best view range in the game. Oh this is a bit of a hairy situation but we're going to finish off the Scorpion G here. We're going to take three rounds from the Sunwa SM. I wish I'd finished off him instead of the the tier eight tank destroyer there but you know when you're at the end of the game and you've got all of your hit points and you're eyeing up a top gun and you're on 3,800 damage and you hopefully can manage to reload faster than the auto-loading heavy tank. Oh, this is feeling pretty good. Just don't want to get ram killed there from behind. That would be rather embarrassing. Two into the side of the IS-3. Three in. Will we pick up the top gun? Oh, yes, we will. That feels good, man. That's a real feels good moment for the Bat Chatillon 12T. I will take that. And, um, and now, look. This was a very fortunate game. I think it was a couple weekends ago that I had a whole tech tree showcase on French auto-loading light tanks. And it wasn't really until I got towards the Batchat 25T at tier 10 that I really started to enjoy. This was definitely one of those those more lucky games that flow into one another. But I was kind of hoping that the replay would provide some food for thought for players who were simply banging their head against the wall, trying to get that 600k to unlock all of the tier 9 Frenchies. So an absolute riot of a game here for the Batignon Chatillon. This was a high caliber, a tank sniper for dealing most of that at 300 meters and a top gun. 1,597 base experience points in the 6 minutes we had here. Yeah, definitely. Not every round goes as well as this when you're playing a tank like this. But by flowing, doing the basics, and making sure we're constantly setting up lines of vision and being at the crunch engagements ready to support our team with the damage that we can deal from that autoloader, it's really what you got to do in, in all of your autoloaders, but specifically inside your light tank autoloaders as well. So ladies and gents, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And also, I hope you're looking forward to the videos that will be coming for the rest of the year. I, I, I don't usually ask for ideas for videos, but look, if you've got a specific video that you've ever wanted to me to make, either on a concept or a specific vehicle, then let me know in the comments. And I'll try and see if I can rustle it up before the end of the year. Once again, no promises. And I'd like to finish as I began. Please, if you, if you want to get notifications, uh, I've never asked for anyone to subscribe to the channel, but considering I'm going to be releasing daily videos, now's a better time than ever. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and then click the, the bell next to it to decide how many notifications that you want to receive for the videos that are going to be released. And finally, I'd like to also say a massive thank you to all of you. It, it still baffles me that even after seven years after after starting my YouTube channel, that there are hundreds of thousands of you that are still tuning in daily to watch my content. Hundreds of thousands of you out there. I'm absolutely super proud to, to be a, a YouTuber. Oh. Hopefully just entertainer, right? I, I, uh, all of the names. I'm just just me. I'm just Will. I'm just Quickie Baby. That, that, that's who I am. And I'm here to hopefully inform you about World of Tanks and its update, as well as all of the different video games that I'm playing. Although at the moment, as you can see, I'm mostly playing World of Tanks, right? Anyway, more to come for the rest of 2019. And really looking forward to, to putting a few up. So thank you so much and hopefully I'll see you soon.